Good morning, YouTube. Today we're gonna to make a large format print on the Canon Pro 4000 printer. This is gonna be a two foot by six foot print, which I feel like is really the sweet spot for a very large print that looks good on the wall without being so big that it becomes very difficult to mount and frame. We'll be doing the mounting and framing in a future video. It was just too much to pack into one. So today what we'll be doing is we'll be prepping the file for print. We'll make a proof print, make any final changes, and then move on to the large print. We'll also spend a little bit of time talking about uh, light temperature and how that affects the print, and you'll see what a print looks like in warm light versus cool light, and just something to keep in mind as you're evaluating the print. I'm not gonna jibber jabber too much, we got a lot to get to, so let's get started. This is the file that we'll be printing today. This is a six by 17 uh, aspect ratio. I captured this in White Sands National Park in April of 2022. This is about 30 minutes before sunrise and you can see that we have a nice subtle glow in the sky and there's a nice soft light on the scene. There's a little bit of blue contrast in the texture of the sand and the shadows and there's just enough light bouncing off the atmosphere to cast some shadow on the yuccas. I think this image is very peaceful and I think that this uh, edit really captures the way it felt to be there. And that's always my goal as a photographer is that I want to be able to create an image that's going to convey the feelings and the emotions that I had when I was out in the field and kind of just bring the viewer along with me and almost give them the sense that they're standing in that same place. So that's twofold is that one, the edit needs to capture the overall feel of being there. And then two, in my opinion, it's very important to capture enough detail so that the viewer can look at the tiny details of the scene and really immerse themselves in the image. So when you're making a six foot print, a lot of folks will say that because it's such a large print, the viewer should stand back. I disagree. Uh, I think the one of the major advantages of a large print is that you can get close and fill your entire field of vision with the print. So this is a six by 17 that I captured using six vertical images that I later stitched in Photoshop. And we'll see if we zoom in to 100% on this yucca plant, the detail is just fantastic. And you can see the individual fibers here on the yucca and the texture in the sand looks great. You can see little bits of um, stray pieces of plant. And I intentionally didn't remove those from the scene because when I go through a scene, I'll remove things like footprints or garbage or things like that. But little pieces of debris or parts of the plant, I don't see those as distractions. I see those as part of the scene and part of reality. So. Um, to me, I'm going to go ahead and leave all that stuff in, but yeah, I, I think that capturing all this level of detail is key to having a successful large print. So what we'll do now is I'm going to bring this into Photoshop and we're going to look through the image to make sure there's no dust. We're going to verify that we have the correct resolution for the print we're making, and then we'll go ahead and get started on making a proof. So we now have the file opened up in Photoshop and there are two steps left to the process for me. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to verify that the resolution is there. So we're going to be making a six foot by two foot print roughly. The end dimensions will end up being more like 24 by 68 or 70. But um, for now I work with the assumption I'll be at 24 by 72. So what I do is I go to image, image size, and then this is going to pull up your um, this panel here. and What's key is that we want to make sure we're maintaining at least 300 pixels per inch. Again, because this is a large print, some people may argue you can go down to 240 or even lower because the viewing distance will change. I disagree with that. I think that I want to get right up to the print, and in that case, you want at least 300 pixels per inch in your image. At 300 pixels per inch, as a one gig file, this gives me 76 inches by 27 inches. That's just larger than what we're gonna be working with, so we have sufficient resolution just as is. I don't need to up-res the file. If I did need to up-res the file, you could do that right here in Photoshop, and you simply change your resolution here, or you could change your size and keep the resolution at 300, and it will up-res the file. I do not do up-res in Photoshop. I use a third-party software for that. I'm not gonna cover that in today's video because I wanna give that a full length video because it's a paid software. And I don't think it would be fair to you to just quickly say this is a program I use and then encourage you to spend money on something you might not need. So I'll do a full video on how I up a file and then you can decide for yourself if it's something you wanna include in your workflow. But on this file, it's not necessary. We have the resolution that we need. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit cancel. Now as a final check, uh, just because I want to make sure the resolution is there and this is a key 
part for me of why I print big. I do one more thing and I pick the most important part of the scene in terms of sharpness and resolution. And then I'm going to just take my selection tool here and I'm going to highlight about 1200 by 1200 pixels. At 300 pixels per inch, this is gonna give me roughly a four by four section of what the final print will look like. So that's what we have here. This should be about four by four in the final print. And then I'm just gonna zoom in until it takes up roughly four by four on my screen. And I have a 34 inch monitor and this is roughly a four by four square. This looks fantastic to me, but I also want to zoom in even further just to make 100% sure that I have the detail that I need. So this right now is roughly 16 by 16. And even at that, which is four times the size we'll be printing, the detail looks great. So the yucca, you can see the individual fibers here. Each blade is tack sharp. The detail in the sand looks great. All of the detail and resolution that I would expect from a professional print is here. So I know in terms of sharpness and resolution, we are good and I don't need to do anything else. I will say for sand dunes images, uh, I usually use an AI software for sharpening. I do not use that for sand. It really struggles, you get a ton of artifacts and it just doesn't look good. I did a simple um, Lightroom sharpening masking, very minimal sharpening. The only thing that received any sharpening in this image is basically the reeds of the yucca plant. I masked out all the sand and only applied very, very minor sharpening to the sand. The reason is, of course, that your computer, if you're trying to do any sort of AI or any advanced sharpening, this looks like noise. Uh, it's very hard for your computer to decide what's sand versus what's noise, and you'll just get these swaths of sand dunes that go smooth because your computer is trying to remove the noise um, and just sharpen the details. So what you end up having to do is have no noise reduction and just sharpening. Um, and then I, again, I mask out the details that I don't need to be as sharp. Okay, so now that we've verified our resolution, the final, uh, final step before we move on to printing our proof is that I want to remove dust. So I, this is the biggest disappointment. If you make a large print, you can get it back and realize that you've missed a dust spot in your edit. So in order to do this, I use Jimmy McIntyre's plugins. Um, it is a paid program, but they're free upgrades for life. And Jimmy just seems like a great guy. So I like to support him. Uh, on his plugins, he has this um, reveal sensor dust filter. And when you select it, what it's going to do is it's going to show you any areas that you have any change in gradation or color or anything. And actually, you can see I've actually, even though I've already done this multiple times, I still missed one tiny dust, dust speck right here. Um, this wouldn't show on the print. You can see when I remove it, you can't tell, but that's just how powerful this little filter is that it just shows every little change. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select my background layer and I'm just going to select my spot healing brush and then I'm going to find that dust speck. I'm gonna need a slightly bigger brush. And then all you have to do is click on the dust spec. It looks like there's another small one here. And then when you unhide the layer, you should not see the dust spec anymore. So I'll go ahead and go through the entire image and focusing entirely on the sky first, because that is where they'll show the most. There's not any detail in the sky, of course. So any dust spots will show, especially in these large prints. I'm not going to make you watch me do that, but after I finish scanning for, um, for, dust, what I do is I zoom all the way out and I like to just look at the image one more time, zoomed out, and I like to evaluate the entire image without having to move my eyes and scan. And looking at it in this small thumbnail really just helps me to evaluate the overall feel of the image, the color, the contrast, and whether or not there are any changes that I need to make. I'm really happy with the edits on this and I think we're ready to move forward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this as a TIFF. You don't want to save as a JPEG, even though it's a very large file. If you save as a JPEG or other um, file types that may have compression, you're going to lose some of that detail. And we worked really hard to make sure that we have the resolution and detail we want. So you want to save as a TIFF, which is a non-compressed file. So I'll go ahead and save as a TIFF, and then we'll go ahead and open it up in the print software and get started making a proof. 
Okay, so I've now opened the file in QImage. This is the printing suite that I use. This is another paid program that I'll discuss in the future. Um, you can do this right out of Lightroom plugin or even Canon has a software that comes with their printers. I'm sure Epson does as well. And that software is fine. If you're gonna be doing a lot of printing though, I do recommend that you look into a specific printing software. I was using Lightroom's plugin and I found it to be very clunky. I was getting inconsistent results. And when you're printing an image, especially large prints, there's a real cost to every mistake you make. You're gonna make mistakes no matter what software you use, but anything you can do to minimize those mistakes, this is a two foot by six foot print. It'll probably cost me roughly $30 in materials, not to mention the time. So an error has a real cost and any software, any tool you can use to minimize your errors is gonna be key. And I've been using QImage now for about two years. I make mistakes still, for sure, um, but much fewer than I do when I was using either Lightroom or Canon software. So again, I'll talk about software in the future, but just a quick note to think about um, how you can minimize your errors. So for now, we're gonna be making this proof. I've set the uh, dimensions to 24 by eight. I set the media type to heavyweight fine art paper. This is gonna be dictated by the paper that you're using. I'm using roll paper and landscape orientation. Now I've downloaded the printer profile off of Hanamule's website. I usually make a custom profile using the iWrite Studio um, calibrator, the same thing I use to calibrate my monitor. In this case, the Hanamule profile was fantastic. Uh, it matched exactly to my monitor, so I did not need to make a custom profile. Once you download your profile, all you have to do is select it in the folder where you keep all of your profiles, and then it will populate here. Just as important as selecting the profile though, is making sure that your driver is not managing color. I don't know why this is set as a custom, or sorry, a default option, but it is. When you go into properties and you go into color settings and then matching, you need to make sure color correction is set to off. Otherwise you're gonna be essentially double profiling. What happens is you have your ICC profile managing your color, and then you have your driver also trying to manage the color. And it's almost like they compete against each other. And what you end up with is the worst clown puke colors you can imagine. Everything will look horrible. But always make sure this is set to off. Otherwise, you will have very, very bad results. We select OK. And then, as you can see, our resolution is at 300, which is what we want. And then for sharpening, this default setting of 5 um, seems to give me a print that matches my monitor. And... Um, I haven't seen any artifacts or any issues, so I always leave this at default. For everything else, I leave it at off. However, for a print gap, I want a quarter inch all the way around. I don't like to print full full bleed because the essentially what that does is you're printing all the way to the edge and beyond of the paper. And I do think that over time that that's going to cause ink to be spraying in the printer that I don't want. I want everything to be caught on the paper. So instead of this being a 24 inch, it's going to be 23 and a half. Additionally, I always leave an additional border down at the end. Uh, this is a six by 17, so at eight by 24, that's gonna naturally happen. But you'll see when I make the full size print, I do the same, and there's a reason for that that we'll talk about when we get to the full size print. But for now, let's go ahead and print the proof and see how it looks. Okay, so I have my proof right up here on my um, evaluation table. This is actually my mat cutting station, but what I have above is a track light that has four lights pointing directly down. And these are Cree 5000 Kelvin and they have a CRI of 95. The CRI is your color rendering index. So it goes from zero to 100. Anything over 90 is considered excellent. And what the CRI is, is it tells you how high on a score of zero to 100 what's the color fidelity compared to how that object would look in direct sunlight. So if I had this print out in direct sunlight, this is 95% accurate to the color. And basically what you're trying to see is, yes, this matches my monitor, but how well is it gonna hold up in various lighting? So given the ideal lighting, I would consider this to be pretty close to gallery quality lighting. It looks great and it matches my monitor, so I know my profile is good and I know that what we're evaluating here is accurate. So the reason I have two here, and this is a value of proof printing, this was my original edit and I created a proof and I was getting ready to move on to the large uh, file and I'm very glad that I started with the proof because as soon as I looked at this print under light, I realized that it's just too blue. Um, this is probably actually more accurate to the scene. It was early morning in that blue hour, but what happens is the yucca doesn't have enough separation here. Um, I really wanted to highlight this as the subject and I really wanted to have it more pop. 
So what I did is I added one tenth of a stop of brightness and plus seven on the temperature. So a very minor adjustment, but you can see how much of a difference it makes in that color temperature and just the overall feel of the image. And I think it's just gonna look really great on the wall. So the proof looks great, it matches the screen. I'm happy with the colors and let's go ahead and move on to the full size print. So I pulled Q image back up. The only change that we're going to be making is the size. So we're going from an eight by 24 to a 24 by 72. I'm gonna start with 72. Like I mentioned earlier, we're gonna to have to adjust that a little bit. Now what I do is um, when I bring the file in, you can see that it automatically resized it. So we're just gonna fit it to the page, or sorry, to the paper. And then we want to make sure that we only have one because every time I make a change, it adds one. And that's something that has messed me up before where I print multiple copies. So we want to make sure we're staying at one of one and that we are at 24 by 72. And now when I hover over, you're going to see the actual size of the print. So it's going to be 23.76 by 67.98. I always want to leave a couple of inches because this will help me when I go to mount it. I want to have a little bit of extra leeway on the one side. So I don't need 72 inches. I don't want to waste all that paper. So I'm going to give myself two inches. So instead of 68, I'm going to make this 70. And you'll see that when I make that change, the file isn't going to change size. It's still 68 by 23 and three quarters. But now I have a smaller white border here at the end. Now, the other thing I want to point out is you can look that at 67.98 by 23.76, we have 334 pixels per inch of available resolution, which is great. We're going to make sure though that we stay at 300 here. So I'm gonna make that change. And then again, we're leaving the profile the same way. I'm just going to triple check, make sure that our color matching is set to off. And then we are all set. So I'm gonna go ahead and click print and let's grab this from the printer. on top of the mounting board that we will be using in the next video to get this mounted and varnished. Once we apply the varnish, uh, this is obviously a rag mount paper, so it has no reflection, it's matte. Um, the varnish I'll be using is going to be um, a luster finish, so it's gonna give it a little bit more saturation, a little bit more pop. Um, right now, the lighting that we have in this room is a little bit cool, um, and you can kind of see that in the print. I think the print looks fantastic. I'm very happy with this, and I think it's going to look great on the wall. I think we'll put it in a nice walnut frame, and it's just going to really accent the room well. I'm very happy with how this print came out, and I just want to quickly zoom in to show you some of the detail here in the yucca, just so you could see how the final print looks. So let's go ahead and reposition and check out that detail. This is just a low resolution uh, snap of the uh, print from my phone. So my phone was just inches away from the print. In order to get this view, your nose would have to be almost touching the print. And even with this low resolution file, you could just see how sharp this print is and how much detail there is. And that's just what I love about big prints is you could just get lost in the image and just take in every little detail. And you could look at an image for hours and not get bored. And I really feel like that's the value of printing compared to looking at something on a tiny screen. You just don't get the full experience of immersing yourself in the image. Okay, well, hopefully that was helpful for you. Hopefully it inspires you to do some printing of your own. Even if you don't do the printing at home, if you send off to the printer, hopefully it gives you some insight and things you need to consider in terms of color, temperature, and how to prepare the file before sending it off. In the future video, we will go ahead and get that print mounted, varnished, and framed up on the wall. And then uh, we'll be doing a ton of printing on this channel just in general. So if this stuff is interesting to you, uh, make sure you subscribe, like this video, and then also send me a comment or a note and just let me know if there are other aspects of printing that you have questions about and something that you would like to see. Otherwise, thank you so much. Have a great weekend and get out there and make some images.